let's put together an ergonomic digital art workstation designed for independent animators like you and me. Hey guys, it's Sebastian here from the Noble Frugal Studio. Today I'm gonna show you how to set up your very own digital animation workshop. I'm gonna review with you guys each piece of gear in my current animation workstation and explain its functional, ergonomic, and aesthetic value to the space as a whole. Be sure to leave me a like and let's get started. Regardless of your medium, animation takes a long time to make. Art in general is a dish that spoils when rushed. So let's design a digital art workstation that will accommodate your long hours by backing you up with functional, ergonomic, and aesthetic equipment. A proper digital art workstation has a good base, engine, interface, and controller. Basically, you need a desk, computer, a monitor, and peripherals to pull off a complete setup. Let's start with the base. Your base should be a sturdy, electronic-friendly desk that is big enough to fit all of your equipment. Before buying a desk, it may be helpful to draw out a map of what you plan to put on it so everything can fit. Good qualities to look for in buying a desk are sturdiness. You wanna make sure your desk doesn't wobble front to back or side to side. You also wanna look at the quality of the tabletop. You might wanna look for specifications such as stain and scratch resistance in the finish of the desk. Adjustability is also important. Can you adjust the desk's height? An adjustable desk will have a huge ergonomic benefit because it'll fit your work habits perfectly. One thing I find really important in my setup is to know the thickness of the edge of your desk. A lot of digital art workstations rely on mounting monitors or boom arms for their microphones. My ideal desk would have at least a one inch thick edge, so it's thick enough to be sturdy, but then not too thick so you can still mount things on the desk. Here I have the standing desk from Branch Furniture. They sent this over for the purpose of this video. This desk is 60 inches wide and 30 deep. And of course, like it says in the name, it stands with a minimum height of 25 inches and a maximum height of 52. We have four memory presets, so you can set up these buttons to a certain height preset so that when you press them, the desk will automatically adjust to a certain height. So why a standing desk? Well, mainly because of its ergonomic benefit. Not only can you stand and straighten your back so you feel better at work, but even when you're sitting, you can set this desk to the perfect sitting height without having to lift it up and adjust the legs. It's very convenient. For the pros, standing desks have a huge health benefit for working long hours, which as an artist, you're just gonna end up doing. They're adjustable for a lot of applications. So I have a standing preset, a sitting preset, and then I also have a preset that's in the standing position, but just a little bit lower because I wanna use the left side of my desk to film gear reviews. What about some of the cons? Well, for the cons, this desk can be a little bit wobbly. And in a standing position, the front to back wobble is acceptable on this desk. It's barely noticeable. But from side to side, the desk wobbles more. To minimize this, you may just have to type or draw a little lighter on your desk, which you can get used to. Another con of standing desks is that the cable management can be tricky and cable management solutions are an extra expense. Branch actually makes a in-desk power unit for this desk specifically that goes right into the slot in the back of the desk. But again, it's an extra expense. Another con is that this desk does not feature an emergency collision brake. It's just something to be mindful of. So in conclusion, having a standing desk will allow great ergonomic benefits to your workstation. I highly recommend looking into one. If your budget is lower than a regular sitting desk, maybe your preference depending on your needs. Let's move on to the engine of your workstation. The engine of your workstation powers your interface and your controllers. It's basically a computer. Depending on your animation medium, your engine's look and components will be different. Here are some general tips for how to design, customize, or pick a good computer for animation. Whether it be a laptop or a desktop, both 2D and 3D animators can use a lot of RAM. I recommend at least 16 gigabytes of RAM for video editing and, and other animation tasks. You also wanna look at a multi-core processor for speeding up rendering times. These days, getting a six core or an eight core processor is pretty cheap. AMD Ryzen processors are known for their affordability as well as their capable speeds and processor counts. My recommended processor for those building their own computer would be the Ryzen 5 5600G APU processor. It has a high base clock speed, you'll always be running at around 3.9, and you also have six cores. For 2D animation, you don't really need 
a really strong GPU. So I'd highly recommend this processor for a 2D animator. Speaking of GPUs, you may want a strong GPU because you might be powering multiple high resolution monitors. My recommendation is to look into an NVIDIA GPU. They have nice streaming codecs and accelerated performance in the 3D program Blender. The overall NVIDIA experience for me is worth the price premium. Other than that, the shell of your engine or the case of your computer can be whatever you want. Because this is your digital art workstation, you may wanna get a little creative with your case to offer a little bit of extra aesthetic inspiration to the space. Let's move on to the interface. The interface of your setup allows you to monitor your controller inputs. So when you type, click, or draw, your interface will allow you to see what your inputs are doing. Namely, these are your monitors. Now, the interesting thing for artists is that your main monitor may also be your main controller. You might be using a pen display. A pen display is a, is a mix of an interface and a controller because you're controlling the computer with the pen and the, possibly the express keys, but you're also monitoring those controls because you're looking at what you're drawing. Whether you're using a pen display or a pen tablet, a drawing tablet is a must. I'd recommend getting one with an adjustable stand so you can get the most ergonomic position for your drawing habits. Another part of making your interface work as a whole is proper lighting. You want your workspace to be lit well so that your monitors aren't giving you eye fatigue. While you're working, I recommend that you have bright daylight, temperature light, hitting all the necessary parts of your setup. It's gonna be around four or 5,000 on the Kelvin temperature scale, and that'll keep you feeling awake while you're working. I recommend getting this Screen Bar Plus from BenQ. This thing works wonders by lighting each inch of your setup without causing glare on your monitors. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this monitor. Now on the bottom, I have the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro. This monitor has a large 24 inch screen so I can have ample drawing space as well as space for different windows and dockers in editing, drawing, and animation software. It also has express keys for those who use them. Personally, I use a Torbox, which we'll talk about in the controller section. This drawing display also has adjustable height. I use it at two heights. I have a height where I do my video editing, which is I push it up close to the monitor and use it like a big old 3DS <laughs> with my controls below. And I have a height where I'm drawing, so I'll bring the monitor closer, change the angle from 20 degrees maybe to a steeper angle and that's the angle I use to draw. When I make straight lines and strokes, I can just let my hand fall with gravity. It's very uh, ergonomic, very comfortable. So that's why I definitely recommend getting a display with an adjustable stand. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the controllers. Controllers are used for inputting commands to the engine. So we input the commands to the engine through the controllers. We monitor the effect of our inputs via our interface. To hold my controllers, I use a keyboard tray. My pen display and my monitor take up a lot of space on my desk, which is why I plan to get a keyboard tray. This keyboard tray is height adjustable and it uses clamps to connect to your desk so you don't have to damage your tabletop. It draws out on a track, so when I'm using it, I can pull it out. And when I'm done with it, I can just push it back in underneath the desk. I actually got the height adjustable one because I actually use this thing underneath the desk mostly. So on the keyboard tray, let's start with, right here we have a 10 key list mechanical keyboard for an ergonomic typing experience. This keyboard is from IKBC. It's their CD87 Typeman 10 key list keyboard with Cherry MX Brown switches. I type a lot of scripts for YouTube. This really helps. So we have the Torbox Neo for quickly inputting shortcut keys and macros. That speeds up your animation, editing, or drawing workflow. We have a good quality mouse for long hours of video editing. This is the MX Master 2S from Logitech. In the back, we have an audio interface and mic for high quality voice acting and music production. This is less animation related, but more on the content creation side. The audio interface is the Studio 24C from Personas. It's affordable, it has two mic and instrument ports, and ports for headphones and studio monitors. This is paired with the AKG P120 condenser microphone. This is a high quality microphone I use for all of my voiceovers and for music production as well. In fact, I'm speaking into it right now. On the other side, we also have the Yamaha HPH studio monitor headphones. Studio monitors deliver a flat neutral frequency into your ear so you can properly mix your music or your YouTube videos or whatever audio you're working with. And finally, for the music production side, I have the Personas Atom MIDI controller, which helps me make beats and record vocals really, really quickly when paired with Studio One Personas' digital audio workstation. And there you have it, guys. Each piece in this workstation plays its role to make the whole experience ergonomic, aesthetic, and most importantly, functional. 
when looking at this setup, if you guys see an idea that you think will work in your setup, I highly recommend that you try it. With that said, I want to thank you guys for watching today. I hope this video was helpful to you and gave you some inspiration for setting up your own digital art workstation at home. I want to say a special thank you to Branch Furniture for sending over their standing desk. Branch wants to give you guys a coupon code for the Branch standing desk. You can get $20 off with the code Noble Frugal Studio. Although I have the executive size desk, you can probably pull this setup off with their smaller team size desk if you want to save even more. Special thanks to Owen Art on Patreon and all of my other patrons loyally supporting me. Thank you guys. You mean a lot to me. Peace.